Hello, my name's Rebecca Radil and I'm the director of HistFest and I'm delighted to welcome you all to HistFest 2021. And this evening we have our launch event, Hist Quiz. Please feel free to check out all the other events that are coming up via the website, which is www.histfest.com. Org, and also tweet, um, live tweet as you're following the events this weekend using the hashtag HistFest2021. Now, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to our event sponsors to introduce the HistQuiz team properly. Hi there, I'm Dan Snow from History Hit. We've started a new history channel. It's like Netflix, but it's just for history. So we make history documentaries for history fans who can't get what they want on normal TV. Some of those documentaries feature some of these brilliant historians you're about to see on this panel. Please go and check out historyhit.tv. We're delighted to support HistFest 2021's opening event, Hist Quiz, featuring a fantastic assortment of historians and comedians. Omar Jalili, Richard Herring, Professor Rana Mitter, Dr. Yanina Ramirez, Dr. Emma Butcher, Dr. Nisha McSweeney and Izzy Lawrence. Enjoy. And welcome to Hist Quiz, a historical quiz where the ancient, the dusty and the outdated all get the chance to participate in a quiz. We've assembled two teams of the finest, the funniest historical expert and Richard Herring to compete for the title of Hist Quiz Champions 2021. Each team will answer a series of ever more fiendish questions. Correct answers will earn them points. Points will earn them a higher score, and the highest score wins. It's a pretty standard quiz stuff. Let's meet the teams. On the red team, we're joined by Dr Nina Ramirez. Nina came to fame in 2011, presenting BBC Four's Britain's Most Fragile Treasure, a documentary about Andrew Neil's ego. Nina, have you got a favourite historical fact? It's, it's more a favourite historical person, really. So I want to take you to the world of the Vikings uh, around the 8th century. Mm. And at this point, the area known as Iceland today hadn't been populated by humans. Uh, one of the only places on, on the earth at that point. And so when they do actually get over there, it's a woman called Un the Deep Minded that leads the first settlers. And she has a ship of 20 criminals, essentially, that she transports over to Iceland and so begins the, the population of Iceland. But I, it's the name I love most, Izzy. It's the Un the Deep Minded. So feel free to call me Nina the Deep Minded. <laughs> might be easier. It might, it might be easier, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also on the red team, we are joined by Omid Jalili. Omid's been in many period dramas like Gladiator, but also a huge number of fantasy movies depicting imaginary realms that bear no relation to the real world, like The Mummy, Sky Captain and The World of Tomorrow and Sex and the City too. Omid, do you have a favourite historical fact? Yes, I do. And I just had this checked with our archaeological expert that uh, the wheel was invented in Mesopotamia between 4500 BC and 3000 BC. And the wheel was first created to make pottery. So it was only used as pottery. So they would make these artifacts and then they put them on the back of a cart being drawn by a horse with no wheels, <laughs> which would put the, put the artifacts at great danger. But it wasn't for another 2000 years where they realized that that same pottery wheel, you can put them on the back of a cart and it would be a wheel, which is why in many arche archaeological digs, when they find Mesopotam Mesopotamian pottery artifacts, they're usually broken. 
That's a, it's a good fact, Ahmed. Thank well you. done. Right. Rounding out the red team, we have Professor Nisha McSweeney. Nisha is a professor of classical archaeology at the University of Vienna. But in 2019, she also presented BBC Four's Digging for Britain, which is not to be confused with Channel 5's Dogging for Britain. Nisha, have you got a favourite historical fact? I do indeed. It is that it's about the little Greek town of Panopeus, which had in its local shrine uh, several lumps of clay. And this, they claimed, was the clay that Prometheus originally used to create humankind out of. And the reason that you know that, apparently, is because it still smelled of man. And I love this because it keeps making me think, what does men smell like? What do men smell like? What is this smell? Rancid groin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was thinking, have you Here been on cigarettes. the London Underground pre-pandemic? <laughs> that is what, yeah, lovely. Turning to the green team, we are joined by Dr. Emma Butcher. Emma's book, Children in the Age of Modern War, chronicles how children have been forced into brutal conflicts when they'd much rather be sitting at home killing each other on Fortnite. Emma, have you got a favourite historical fact? Uh, yeah, and it's a little bit less gloomy than actually what I research. So in 1252, Henry III was documented to have been given a magnificent white bear. And supposedly a polar bear lived in the Tower of London during that period and actually was able to hunt and fish within the Thames. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's, but can I just say, Emma's winning. Uh, right, also on the green team is a man... Best known as Al Murray's postman, he puts the odd in podcast. It's Richard Herring, or as the cool kids like to call him, Rehur. Richard, tell us, have you got a favourite historical fact? Yes, I'm quite obsessed with uh, Rasputin, and um, one of the conspirators in the murder of Rasputin, I don't think he had much to do with it, really, Felix Yusupov, uh, is the reason why all films now have the disclaimer any similarity to persons living is purely coincidental because he sued MGM in about 1929 for a film called Rasputin, the Princess, in which his wife uh, supposedly had sexual relations with Rasputin, which she didn't. Uh, and uh, he sued her for what would be about $20 million, I think, in today's money. And made his, he was one of the richest men in Russia anyway, lost his fortune, came out and then made his fortune from the murder he'd been involved in. But so that's why we have that at the end of films. And finally, on the green team, we have Professor Rana Mitter. As well as being a historian of Chinese nationalism, Rana is a prolific judge, from Samuel Johnson Prize to the Penn Hessel Tiltman Prize to the Kundal History Prize and the Elizabeth Longford Prize for Historical Biography. Well, today we're judging you, Rana. We are judging you. So, have you got a favourite historical fact for us? It's basically a story about career progression in medieval China. I'm thinking of Wu Zetian, who was the only woman ever to become emperor of China in her own right, back in the Tang dynasty in medieval China. But her method of getting there was uh, a little bit unusual. She started off basically as a, a lady of the court, uh, you know, keen on uh, trying to get in in the imperial system, and realized that she would never get there as she waited her turn. So basically the emperor's wife and various concubines mysteriously turned up quite soon after her arrival at court with various of their limbs having been cut off and then eventually drowning in vats of alcohol. And shortly afterwards, uh, Wu Zetian first of all uh, hooked up with the emperor and then became emperor in her own right. So a fantastic story about corporate progression of a very, <laughs> you know, proto-feminist sort, I would say. By the way, she was an extremely good and efficient emperor and the empire prospered uh, very mightily under her rule. Uh, maybe so, but I like my limbs. So, enough of that. Our first round is about the history of medicine and disease. Woohoo! It's rounds we have chosen to call, even under the present circumstances. Have we got flus for you? So, red team, question one. If you were to visit Strasbourg in the summer of 1518, what would you find the people there doing non stop for days on end? You are allowed to confer. What was the date? 1518. 1518. 1518. 1518. And Strasbourg. Doing? So 1518, it could be that they are having to self-isolate, are they? Or Because I'm thinking if it's an out, one of the later outbreaks of plague, did they do what Venice did and just wall up the whole city so nobody could come in and give them 
the plague. I don't know. I, li I like your first thing that they're self isolating. That would be a, the kind of answer that we'd probably kick off the whole quiz with. Mm. Nisha, I don't do know. You uh, that sounds uh, that sounds very sensible to me. Absolutely, and I like the idea of self isolating as the city mm. as well. As a city, yeah. Well, Ooh, Venice yeah. definitely yeah. did it. Venice did fine during the Black Death because they just shut all the <laughs> gates wow. to stay out. And 15, so I don't know. 18, it's a guess. It's Fifteen guess. eighteen sounds kind of plaguey. I, I would say let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's go with your answer. <laughs> let's let's go with That's it. Final plaguey. Okay. Final answer. Final answer. They'll all be final isolating. Answer. You'll be uh, pleased to know that you're entirely wrong. Oh. Completely incorrect. <laughs> In fact, ladies and gentlemen, they were dancing. That's right. In July of 1518, Frau Toffia stepped into the street and started dancing for four to six days. By the end of the week, 34 others had joined her and within a month, the crowd had swelled to 400. Now, does anybody know what the prescribed cure was? Do you have any idea? Well, I don't know what the prescribed... It's obviously a flash dance. This is, this is the first it's flash dance. It's a flash dance. Yeah, the uh, cure. Is that the pandemic or was that the cure? We could just dance our way out of a pandemic. I, I, think, I think I think Nisha I'm gets definitely a half point for that because the cure was more dancing, oh. which turned out to be completely ineffective. By the end of summers, dozens of Alsatians, which are people, not dogs, had died from heart attacks, strokes and sheer exhaustion due to the non-stop dancing. Scientists still don't know what the reason was for the mindless intense dancing, but then they haven't yet explained the Macarena. So it's hardly a surprise. And so to the Greens, a simple question for you. Can you name the four humours? Can you name them? Can you? Go on. <laughs> um, so uh, one of them would be Morecambe and Wise. No, so that shares my age. Um, is Collar one of them? C-H-O-L-E-R, does that sound like a humour to you? Um, being choleric, being um, splenetic, being sanguine, those are, are humours, are they not? Yeah, 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 sure. So going, going choleric... <laughs> Emma sounds so unconvinced, yeah. you're going to have to do better, right? I'm not, I'm not the man to ask <laughs> I, that humour. You have if you've got alternative... <laughs> This is a, if, if you have earth, alternative, alternative, I was going to say earth, wind, fire, yeah, and water. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And then I thought, phlegm. Yeah, yeah, I feel like phlegm might be in there. I, feel I think phlegm, because it, it, it's, the, it's the adjectives you get from them. Uh, well, of course, Richard would know all about alternative humour anyway, but if it's phlegmatic, um, yeah. choleric, sanguine, yeah. and what's the fourth? What's the fourth collar? Water. Oh, so what's <laughs> Wet. Yes. Nob, nob Wet. So we're, 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 we're stuck between either pre-modern elements. Syphilis, syphilis. <laughs> Let's go with syphilis. I'm, I'm up with that. Um, is that I, your final can... answer then? Uh, no, Nina, you can't. You can't. And I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer. I can tell you know the answer. Well, the, the four, the four, the four humours in that case. I mean, Emma and uh, Emma and Richard. Which are we going with? Uh, uh, choleric, phlegmatic, sanguine, yeah. etc. Uh, do yeah. we have a fourth? Or we, no, we're going to have to give up on the fourth. Okay, we're going to go with collar, phlegm, sanguine, or is is this okay? That's our answer. Now, as I'm sure Nina will tell you, you're a bit wrong. You've taken this slightly too far because the four humours are the things that balance within the body. So they are black bile, yellow bile, blood and the inside of a Cadbury's cream egg. No, you're right. It was phlegm. So red team. Now we're back to we're back to some more, you know, disease for you guys. So the Antonine Plague of 160 to 185 AD was also named after which physician? The Antonine Plague of 160 to 185 AD. Oh, don't, don't, don't need to put up my hand. No, okay. tell us. Okay, uh, a Galen, I'm pretty sure it's Galen. Ah, I think that, you're right. You, yeah, does that sound about right? Is that your yeah. final answer? Omid, are you happy with that one? It was the, did you say the Antonine? Plague. Plague. Yeah. yeah. Anita, could you just explain why that's, why you're going with Galen, if it's called the yeah, Antonine? So, Is it Antony yeah, Galen? So it's, <laughs> Unfortunately, on Galen Antony, it's um, within the the time of the Antonine emperors. But Galen is the famous physician from Pergamon, who was active at that time, very well known for vivisecting live pigs. Unfortunately, yeah. also in Planet but, of the Apes as well. Yes, is that really? Roger Dowell's character? Galen, Planet of the Apes. I'm sure he's named yeah. after him. Yes, the actor, the actor. Who Probably that way around. Yes, yeah. I agree with Richard. Okay, let's go with it. <laughs> let's go with it. And you are. 
Correct, it was yeah! Galen who Yay! had this entire plague named after him just because he described it, and I think that's a bit unfair, but there we go. Uh, so, back to the greens. Greens, in medieval Japan, Hososhin was the god or demon of which disease? Diarrhea, sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably good as good as any. Well, the question, of course, always is: Is diarrhea a disease or a symptom? One of the great mm. philosophical questions of that is always the question. I mean, <laughs> there are maybe I'm surprised that hasn't been every question so far. <laughs> there are the forums quiz. on this sort of thing. Maybe uh, this is where um, syphilis comes in again. Could be. Oh, oh, should I just say syphilis for every answer? Syphilis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? At some point, it might, it it might end up laugh. being uh, uh, being uh, being right. Um, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to put in tuberculosis. How about that? A lot of that happens, so sure. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, once again, the green team are incorrect. Uh, we're actually looking at smallpox. However, uh -huh. Hososhin was said to be afraid of dogs and things that were red, which is why you never read the story about Clifford, the big red dog, getting smallpox. OK, so red team. Who was the first woman to qualify as a physician and surgeon in Britain? It's not coming yeah. off the top of my head. I mean, it's going, I would imagine it's going to be 18th century, but mm -hmm. I can't that think late. of a name. Well, to qualify, I mean, I'd think it'd probably be even later. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I'd it's... even go Edwina Curry, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think that would have happened until the early 1900s. No, you're right, because you know if it's a qualification then women have only been allowed to be attending university for just over 100 years so which is not a sense. good thing yeah and then even then they could go to the university but they couldn't actually get not the qualify so it's exactly. probably not to the second quarter of the 20th century yeah if we're thinking i mean it, um, yeah it's, it depends how how qualified is being used but to be honest we don't know the name so no. <laughs> we can sit and talk about it but <laughs> should we have a guess should we take like an educated guess Elizabeth Andrews. That's a oh! great guess. Yeah, that's close. I bet that's close. <laughs> that's so close. I'm so tempted to give you half a point for that. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Her name was Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. Oh wow! So, oh, wow. It's just that like so close. The most British name you could possibly have. Um, great guess. I, I think she was sister brilliant. of uh, really Melissa Fawcett as well. But oh, yes, really? she, you're right. It was quite um, late in the 19th century that she and got her. And it's really because she's qualified in Scotland, isn't she? she went to St Andrews. I think so. And they stopped. They stopped to getting in. Her. Yeah, it's, it wasn't so much they'd have her. It was just that they couldn't find a rule that said they couldn't admit a woman. And then after she was admitted and got a qualification, they shut the door so no other woman could do it because you know, friendly. I think you deserve at least half a point for that because let's just pick the most English name we could possibly think of. It was. It was. It was pretty much that. Oh, okay, so. Green team, if you contracted the French disease, what would you be suffering from? Syphilis. I think, I th I think that <laughs> Richard's theory of putting syphilis as every answer might be that wrong, actually. Are Is you it... happy with that, Emma, as well? I mean, surely. It's got to be. <laughs> At some point, the answer is going to be syphilis, isn't it? So, uh... And the answer is syphilis. So red team, I'm going to show you a picture. This is a picture round. And all of the pictures come from the British Library's collection. Now this picture is from the 14th century and I'd like you to tell me what's going on in it. There's the picture, have a good old look. Oh wow, what is that? It looks like somebody is being treated for hemorrhoids. And you have a physician there, probably a religious gentleman, it's very hard to see, but yes, I think they are using a poker, an iron, to burn out hemorrhoids. Are you sure what that's you think, recreational? <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> could be. Yeah, it's hard to see, but I think, I don't know, what do you think? Omid, what do you reckon's going on there? Um, on the one hand, I do see a pair of legs, a buttock, and, and what looks like an anus on the far right, uh, but I also see crochet for some reason. I see a very long crochet needle. <laughs> well, so maybe I, that's what they do with the hemorrhoids. Yeah. Is it unusual to see an arsehole on the far right? <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. A round of applause one. 
<laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Nisha? I, it looks I like it's... other versions I've seen of people performing this quite common medieval <laughs> medicinal treatment. But I don't know. What do you think? Happy to go with your with your with your knowledge on this. It just I, I just don't know. But there's no upper body. It's just this kind of disembodied bum and legs floating yeah. floating yeah. around. You know, it's not balanced on anything. It's um, yeah, maybe he is crocheting his own toy for personal use. The definite finger up there. Look at that. Yeah, I yeah. think that is definitely <laughs> hemorrhoid treatment, medieval style. Yeah. That's a long. Yeah. That's a long finger up there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, it's part oh, of the game I... as well. <laughs> I am not familiar with hemorrhoids and hemorrhoid surgery. However, according to my answer here, it is in fact an operation to correct an anal fistula. And a fistula is, of course, an abnormal passageway between organs that do not usually connect. And not, I repeat, not the name of a vampire who likes punching things. <laughs> um, <laughs> me a minute. Don't try this at home. <laughs> okay, so green team. Your picture is a little earlier from the 13th century. What is going on here, medically speaking? The man's being fed Ooh. an octopus to get, get the worms out of him. Or is it a very early form of wired internet? <laughs> <laughs> or, it, or is it a rope with giant teeth on it? I do like the teeth. Uh. Um, is it is it a squid based? It looks like a, it looks like a. It looks. Is it squid? It looks like a tentacle, doesn't it? Or, or is it an early form of denture that the sort of teeth Ooh. are being fed on a kind of belt system into the mouth? I don't see how that would work, and they look a little big. I mean, it might oh, now not be. Now, now he wants it to work. I mean, <laughs> it might not. It <laughs> might not be uh, to scale. Because but, of the, uh, the well... I think like some rope, some teeth on a rope is not is this the based best. On the well... way. The well-known efficacy of medieval medical uh, uh, techniques. Um, well, what, what's the rope doing? Is this like a way to get some tonsils out, or something, or something weird like that? Just wrap them I'm going to have to it. hurry you up for an answer. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. I'll, I think it's going I'll... down the digestive tract and and clearing out something that way. I'm happy to go with Richard. Okay, digestive fine. Tract clearing. Digestive tract it is. Richard, you overcomplicate everything. It's a simple tooth extraction. Oh, you're You'll notice, right. yeah, he's attached all the previously extracted ones to the enormous pliers as a warning for future teeth. So, 100% right. I got syphilis right. I Did you get you syphilis, never... Richard? Yeah, well syphilis. done. Yeah, yeah, syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so red team, what is this picture and what does it show? That to me, that looks like a woman giving a taxi driver a, a cheeky tip. <laughs> um, did you say was the question what's happening? What's going on? What's yeah? What's going on here, medically speaking? To me, the most obvious thing is that it looks like there's a pulse being taken. But yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too, Nisha. Yep, let's go with that. Okay, you guys are correct. The physician is taking this person's pulse. There are many reasons someone's pulse may have been raised in the 13th century. A particularly racy papal bull, just having done a ninth crusade or a diet that consisted entirely of turnips and beer. So our uh, next image is for the green team. Oh, blimey. What is this depicting, medically speaking? That's just bloodletting, isn't it? Yeah, that looks like sort of plain because it's the bowl at the bottom, isn't it? The blood's yeah. being let out. Um, yeah, I think blood, we'll go for bloodletting. Bloodletting. Let's go for bloodletting. Excellent. Correct. It is bloodletting. Bloodletting was a common procedure to cure gout, to treat epilepsy, or whenever a medieval peasant met their agent. So at the end of round one, the red team have three and a half points, and the green team have. Two points, meaning that the red team are our current leaders. Never fear, green team, there'll be plenty of chances to catch up in our second round, which we've called, Whose Time Is It Anyway? <laughs> in this round, for each question, I will give one of the three teams three events, and they must tell me the century in which they all happened. Yes, time is a construct, and the calendar is just an arbitrary measure applied to the process of an uncaring universe by mammals desperate to find an order and meaning in its rotations around a distant star, but it's also a pretty good basis for a quiz round. So, uh, Red Team, in which century did the following things happen? 
Right, listen, listen up. One, the first seismometer was invented and used to detect the direction of earthquakes. Two huge structures were built in Britain and five men headed up an enormous empire. In which century? Oh, wow. Well, hang on, all those bits of information is about Happened. one century. One century. It's tricky, isn't it? It could be a trick question because it could be like the huge structures could be Stonehenge. Um, <laughs> and it's the five people running an empire is sort of throwing me off a bit there. I mean, could we go that ancient? What do you think? I wouldn't be surprised if they had ways of sizing up earthquakes. What do you think, Nisha? Your ancient stuff? I, I think we could go ancient. I'm, I'm, I fully, fully believe that there might well be something Mesopotamian which would measure the direction of an earthquake that early. But I'm not sure where the empire would be. Yeah, I know. Hmm. Because... Persia would be, no. How would you do the five no, empires? it's got to be... Early, but let's. What what century would that be though? When when would we want to go for Stonehenge? Exactly. That was... <laughs> oh. it was, Stonehenge was built over be about three thousand years. I, I don't mean to help you, but really. <laughs> All right. Well, in which case, a more logical answer would be to go more modern, wouldn't it? It'd be to go for the eighteenth century. What do you think, Omid? I have no fucking idea at all. <laughs> We're all in this together. We none of us have a fucking clue. So, <laughs> what do you oh. reckon? Should we just should we go like 15th yeah. century BCE or something? Just for shits and giggles. Okay, okay. 1500. So, 1500 years before Christ. Yeah, kind of Bronze Age. So Let's go later. Bronze, bronze Age. Well, because earthquakes, <laughs> earthquakes could be measured. You could, people just go, oh, that was a bit high. Yeah. Ooh. My plate moved. That could just be a, yeah, a stick. That could be any time. Measuring right, yeah. Any time. I, I think let's go 1500 BC. I want one of you guys to go out in the garden with a stick and measure which direction an earthquake came from. I mean, wow. Okay, you're wrong. You're, you're wrong. You're, you're very wrong. Um, admittedly, you're 1700 years wrong. So uh, the second century AD, in AD... 132, uh, Zhang Hen of Ch oh. China's Han Dynasty invented an instrument for measuring the seasonal winds and movements of Earth, consisting of large bronze vessels with eight dragon's heads on top. In the event of an earthquake, one of the dragon's mouths would open and drop a ball into the mouth of a bronze toad at the base, making a sound and indicating the direction in which the earthquake was happening. Disappointingly for Zhang Hen, had he just thought to turn his invention sideways, he would have invented not only the world's first seismometer, but also hungry, hungry hippos. The second century, we also saw the building of Hadrian's and the Antonine Walls in Britain. And in, <laughs> I love Nina just going, of course. Uh, you feel like <laughs> I got stuck on Stonehenge. I really and did. in 193 <laughs> AD was the year of the five emperors, which shouldn't be confused with the year of the six emperors in 238 AD or the eve of the five, which was 1999, when they finally scored a number one hit with Keep On Moving. So well done, guys, though. 1700 years oh, out. God. Let's see if uh, the green team can get any closer. Okay, Greens, your secret century was one in which roads fell, the earth revolved around the sun and caused a revolution, and the people of Transylvania went on a diet. What century am I talking about? Okay, so this is going to be sort of uh, early modern, isn't I it? I think it, I thought it was like 11th or 12th century. Oh, that early? For... I, were roads falling? The fall of roads. Well, roads fall. Roads keeps falling. That's the thing. Uh, I mean, you know, it's going to fall. Uh, uh, it's the Humpty Dumpty of places. Yeah, this is this is well, quite so, absolutely. And then you know, keep putting statues and things up as well, of course. Uh, but in this particular case, is it going to be at some point during um, a uh, kind of Ottoman versus West clash? Is that uh, does that sound plausible for the kind of context? Well, the other thing, so the Transylvania's going... got to be a bit later, isn't it? Because the Transylvania hasn't been around that long. Well, they're going on a new diet. So whether that means a kind of diet as in the parliament or whether we're thinking about Countess Batori and um, her um, interest in uh, allegedly, allegedly uh, taking the blood of peasants to bathe in. Was that uh, was that a thing? That was a thing. Blood, 
blood baths yeah so, uh, is, so are we thinking like 13th or 14th century like that kind of time or even later slightly later, late, slightly later. later. Galileo okay. is there are we talking well, about then, the earth going around the sun uh yeah or is it uh which one is it revolution or Copernicus um 16 go on then I mean I'm obviously way off I'm just jumping up I, centuries, I, gave, so. I gave 16 yeah 16th meter. yeah should we try 16th okay should we go for 16th? Okay. We're okay, go final answer. Sweet, sweet 16th. Correct! It was the 16th century. Get it. <laughs> the second Get siege there. of Rhodes. It's only number two, and it led yeah. to the Ottomans expelling the Knights of Rhodes in 1522. The Copernican Revolution started with the publication on the revolution of celestial spheres, which is not something that yeah. he wrote if he was a lady in the bath. Don't forget, you must not confuse the Knights of Rhodes with the Club Knights of Mykonos, which is a rather different sort of Greek island event. <laughs> well, um, Prince um, John Sigismund Zapolya promulgated the Edict of Torda, which is the first law of freedom of religion in the world, and uh, not a not a snazzy fab new diet in another sense. So, Reds, it's your second question of this round. So, when was this? Algebra was invented, the Ghanaian Empire was established, and Ivor the Boneless arrived in England. Oh, mm. I with the boneless arrived in England know. is one I can kind of get my head in, but I with the boneless. Ah, oh, so it's going to be seventh. Oh, is it eighth, <laughs> ninth? Hang on. I love seven, eight, ninth, eighth. Oh, I, God, because he's borderline eighth, ninth. Okay. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think about algebra? I, I think seventh, yeah, because algebra was created in the Middle East, Abna Sina, so that, that's around the seventh century. Yeah, the only problem is I'm thinking the Viking invasions start in 794, so it's going after that. So it's got to be 9th then, because it'd be into 800 and. So I think 9th century, I think. When, I'm, I, said, I'm, when I said 7th, I meant 9th. Yes, you did. <laughs> you absolutely meant 9th, didn't you? Yeah. And Nisha, what do you think? Uh, that sounds brilliant to me, absolutely, given how wrong I got the last one. Oh, uh, yeah, but I got it so wrong, too. Oh, God. You know what? Stonehenge. No, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ivor the Boneless, the creator of Stonehenge. That's <laughs> with algebra. Ninth tenth. I think we're going to go ninth. And you are correct. Yeah! Well done. Yeah! Well done. Oh. It was indeed the ninth century. Many Vikings were named after the most noticeable features, like Gorm the Old, who was old, and Sven Forkbeard, who had a forkbeard. Ivor the Boneless got his name from his deep and abiding love of buckets of fried chicken. <laughs> so, uh, Greens, question two. It's over to you. In which century did all of the following things happen? Sun Tzu's Art of War is translated into English. Plague claims the lives of an estimated 15 million people and the largest empire known to history comes to an end. What century did all of this happen in? So I'm guessing the largest empire is the Mongol Empire, isn't it? Under Khans. Uh, looks large, or at least on the map. And then plague, kind of Black Death sort of stuff going on. Yeah. There's lots of plagues, yeah. though, isn't there? Because the big yeah. plague was but like think, 200 I, million deaths. Yes. Um, my guess, though, here is that the ending of the Mongol Empire may not be unconnected to the plague uh, no. as well, which doesn't necessarily mean that the, the, the two have to, to go together. And uh, translation of Sun Tzu's Art of War, bing -va, into English. Um, it strikes me as being plausible it could be about that sort of uh, sort of time you get um the first importation of chinese classics comes with well actually it doesn't come with jesuits jesuits a bit later later on but about that sort richard of looks absolutely yeah. what, on, richard, what do you think, think richard I'm, I'm babbling here so stop, stop babbling. <laughs> I, I don't know i don't even know when the mongol empire was I don't know when it was it's about half past, half past three, 27th of September. <laughs> um, I just think, is there an empire that's larger than the Mongol Empire that anyone could come up with? You know, name your empire now. Or hold Ottoman. Uh, that didn't come to an end until 19, uh, the, what is it, the Treaty of Sevres in 1919, right? 
exactly so it's not that well, it couldn't be, <laughs> i just it couldn't named be, a big empire the only thing i thought was it could be 20th century if it was the influenza killing lots of people but i don't think that was oh yeah i mean it could and be the that the, and the also end of the oh, okay. and then and That's... then a, a late translation oh, I love of... it. I like maybe that. i'm i'm gonna go with 20th you know yeah, i'm gonna just okay so art of war um biggest empire ever ottomans uh and what was the other one the that was the plague and also the translation of the art it's of war. specifically the bubonic plague oh the bubonic plague oh, okay. Oh, okay yeah well i'm gonna go i'm gonna go i'm gonna throw us back towards mongols and get that yeah okay okay, okay. Try 13th? Yeah. Let's go i th- trust yeah. you I, 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 would, I wouldn't do that but i'm gonna on the foot of the mule, i'm gonna go for the 13th century 13th yeah and you are seven centuries out. You should have stuck to the 20th century. Oh, the sorry, Art of guys. War was first published in English in full yeah, in 1910. Was, I was say it was unlikely to be translated into English in the 1300s, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, the bubonic plague was consistent. Well, the bubonic plague was a consistent problem throughout yeah. the 20th century, and the century saw an end of the British Empire. Yeah. But nobody has dared tell the English yet, in case we throw a tantrum. So, yeah, British Empire, largest one ever, because flags. Right, okay. On to our next round, an incredible struggle for mastery and a chance for big, big points. A fight, if you will. Tudor death. See, Tudor, it's like Tudor, anyway. Um, Even if you won't, I'm calling it that. There are multiple answers to the next questions. Each team will have a minute to answer, and you get a point for every correct answer, Okay. Greens, why don't you go first this time? All you have to do is name actors who have played Henry VIII on screen. You get a point for each correct answer and you have one minute. Your time starts now. Charles Paul, name- Paul Schofield. Um, what's his face from Nil by Mouth? Uh, Gary Oldman. I think not him, but he might have done. Um, the- um, Thora Heard, no. Um <laughs> You know, the working class uh, star of... Um, Ray Winston. Ray Winston. Ray Winston. Ray Winston. Um, uh, Richard Burton, maybe? Damien Lewis. Oh, yes, very good. Oh, and uh, the guy from... The pretty guy from the recent one. Oh, uh, I think of his name. Time Phil. sticking. Um, uh, Bernard Cribbins. Sid James. Yes, very good. Um, quite right. And Lion in Winter, who's that? Is that the one I said, Paul Scott? Oh, uh, Schofield. That sounds, yeah, Paul Schofield. Um, um, uh, Derek Jacobi. Come on, let's just throw with it. it doesn't matter throw in, wrong, just throw it? in actors. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh. He's done everything. Kenneth Branagh. Uh, um, I don't think he's done everything. Florence Olivier. Florence yeah. Olivier. Uh... Now we've done it. We've done. That's it. What's you're, that you're pretty finished. Voice? So the answers are, and you've got five points, uh, Keith Mitchell, Charles Lawton, Jonathan Rhys Myers, Robert Shaw, Ray Winston, uh, Eric Banner, Rex Harrison, Damien Lewis, Richard Burton, Ben Wilbond from Horrible Histories, Rowan Atkinson from Horrible Histories, uh, Jared Harris, Sid James, well done, James Robertson Justice, Charlton Heston, and Alan Bates. So, yeah. And also my friend Rachel, when we did it in school place. (laughs) So... (laughs) Uh, so now for the Reds, it is the same question, but not Henry VIII. So I want you to list the actors who have played Elizabeth the First on screen. Your minute starts now. Margot Robbie, Helen, Helen Mirren, Kate Blanchett, <laughs> Kate Blanchett, Blanchett definitely did. Uh, oh, James Dent, Miranda, Judy Dent, James Dent yeah. in Shakespeare. Uh, Miranda Richards, Miranda Richardson. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ooh. Oh God! Uh, oh no, I'm thinking of Anne Boleyn in the Tudors. Um, yeah, now I'm, we've got Blackadder done. Yeah. Any other on screen? Oh. Um, we've got we've got Kate Blanchett. We've got Dame yep. Judi Dench. So that's the two Elizabeth films. Did you get Margot Robbie as well? Margot yep. Robbie. Yeah. Um, can't think of any others that. That oh, there that, must be that, more. There must be, mustn't there? there? Must be loads. Um, Oh God, young Elizabeth. I'm trying to think who would play a young. Well, that's my yeah. No, I can't think of any no. others. 
Did I say no. Dame Judy? I don't know if she... You've said Dame Judy out. Dench several <laughs> times. Good. And you also <laughs> said Jane, have we Dame said... Judy Dench rather than Jane Judy Dench. So you've, yeah, you've, Judy Dench. you've did it correctly. <laughs> so Excellent. that is your time anyway. You did very well. You got five. Amazing. Uh, the answers were Glenda Jackson, Clay Blanchett, wow. Margot Robbie, mm. Judy Dench, Helen Mirren, Betty Davis, Vanessa Redgrave, um, oh. Helen McCroy, Quentin Crisp, Miranda Richardson and Gene Simmons. So there. Uh, now that brings us to the scores. The green team um, are just just inches behind, just so close. It's, it's as close as the First World War. They have a score of eight and the reds are on 9.5. So absolutely amazing. We are moving on to our next round, which is so exciting because future historians of haircuts can probably skip 2020 and 2021 but for the rest of time there are some quite interesting haircuts so let's find out who has a bee in their barnet and around we are calling never mind the buzz cuts uh each team will have a chance to answer four questions on haircuts. There won't, however, be any questions about buzz cuts, which were introduced to the US Army in the 1950s to stop the spread of lice, because then you would have never the buzz cuts, which would make a mockery of a rather strained title. Reds, uh, you can go first. We're in the Roman period. What would you be doing if you were mixing wood ash, unslaked lime and bicarbonate of soda? What would you be doing? You're a Roman. You'd be what you up dyeing to? your hair, I think. Dyeing it changing its colour, no? And the answer is, you are lightening your hair, so I'm going to give you that. Hence the Roman saying, blondes have more fun, but only after they've cut down a tree, burnt it to ash, unslaked some lime, ground some trona oil and combined it all in a big pot, none of which is fun. Uh, so well done, guys. So let's go to greens. Um, so what is the 19th century entrepreneur, Sheikh Dean Mohammed, credited with bringing to the UK? I'm guessing it's going to be one of those things like, um, is it pomade or some sort of hair gel? This is all hair stuff, right? Unless... Um, like hair gel? Yeah, sort of like pomade, hair gel, that sort of okay. thing. Something to sort of stick stick, stick your hair down. Um, bearing in mind that 19th century is when people start having sort of finely tuned moustaches and, you know, the sort of... The, the Ur version of Brill Cream, I guess, that sort of, uh, sort of thing. You or think hair version. gel and you are... Incorrect. It was actually shampoo. That's oh. right. We didn't have shampoo before 1814. What? Um, I know. <laughs> Muhammad was an Indian traveller and surgeon and is credited with introducing the practice of shampoo or shampooing to Britain. So, uh, question two. This is the back to the red team. What do Lady Diana, the Invisible Man, and the New Avengers and Medieval Boys have in common? Page boy haircuts. No, that's got that's we're got talking to be the, hair because she bowl. did, didn't she? Diana had a page boy put in. Um, but what's what I don't imagine she did the whole bowl thing. What's the invisible man got to do with it? <laughs> well, I'm just thrown by the invisible man because yeah. that's not even a clue. No, should we go for page boy haircuts at this stage? Just because I know Diana, we could. If, if, if the original in, Invisible Man had a, but when they re, he revealed himself, had a page boy haircut, this would be <laughs> We're a all good. <laughs> I think let's go with that. Right. And boy. you are, and you are, I'm just going to do my Diana hair. Just, uh, um, you are absolutely correct. The page boy haircut, popular in the 1950s and 1960s, it was thought to have been based on the haircuts of medieval boys and was particularly popular amongst invisible people. Or so they said. Um, I don't particularly understand that clue either, but if you get that, you're a very good nerd and well done. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, green team, what do Madame Pompadour, Morrissey, Elvis Presley, and the Gibson girl have in common? Quiffs. They didn't quiffs. all that. Yeah, it's got to be quiffs. Yeah, it's not about dying on the toilet, is it? Um... <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a quiff. Quiff, I think, yeah. I think we'll go for Quiff. Let's move no, it quiff. on. Yeah, quiff move good. it on. Move it on, Quiff. You see, it's more than a Quiff, guys. It's oh. the Pompadour. 
So I don't know if I can give you maybe half a point for that question because like the pompadour is a thing. You need your hair turned back on the forehead in a roll, which is more than just a sort of like Tintin thing. Ah, um, bollocks. Yeah, we're correct. I think a we're quip. Right. Just it's, a it's a pompadour. It's a fucking quip. I said quip. her name. I said her name. It her wasn't. name's in the question. No. We can't, can't, you can't, quip, you can't have it? the name in the question. <laughs> It's no, a quip. You can, no, a quip. and I gave it yeah, and you still got Elvis, it wrong. It's an Elvis Presley quip. It's a Morrissey quip. No one calls it a pompadour. I don't think you're talking Fuck about the idea. I'm walking if we don't get a point. <laughs> I've had cancer. I've had chemotherapy on Friday. Oh, no, he's putting he's put the big point one. No, that. <laughs> it's come to that. It's come mm, to that. Mm, I'm just enjoying you losing even more now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, other things that Morrissey shares with Madame Pompadour is a large collection of books, being raised Catholic and having attitudes that belong in the 18th century. Right, uh, let's go. Uh, the red team, it's your third question. In 1698, which monarch introduced a beard tax? In 1698, which monarch introduced a beard tax? And you have heard of this person. A British monarch. I didn't oh, say that, but you have heard of this person. 1698. It's almost the 18th century. It's almost. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't. A uh, beard tax. So um, it's not going to be in Britain. I, I don't sound I, like a It has to British be a thing to do. I think it would be French thing to do. Oh, I don't know. All my French kings. Oh, oh, which, 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 Louis which the something. Well, hang on. Which culture mm. would not have any beards? Wouldn't it be the Far Eastern countries like China or mm. Japan? Oh, good call. No, there's beards. I would think Chinese beards. Mm. But remember, they're introducing a beard tax. So you'd kind of want beards. I'm not helping too much. Oh, right. oh, yes, good yes. point. Good point. Yeah, well, you want could, a beard. It could be somewhere in the Middle East. It could, it could be um, a, yeah. a Persian, Persian king or the Shah of something. What was the date? 1698. 1698. Eight. Okay. Mm. And we have heard of this person. Oh, I don't you know. You have. It's, oh, it's a hard one, so you never know where to place them. But, Are we allowed um, to steal from the other side if they get it wrong? No, I'm not allowed we that. weren't allowed to with no. the. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Uh, uh, Nina did, did actually did nearly burst at one point. I nearly burst and I held it in. Um, yeah, the I humans thing. She was just like, it's flaring! <laughs> yeah. It's red bile! You can see it in my face! Um, no, I don't know. Final answer, I, come on, pick it? someone. No idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. Yeah. It was Peter the Great, the best of all oh, the Peters. Russian. Oh. Yes, he wanted Russians to appear more fashionable. In retrospect, he should have let them keep the beards as long as they paired them with bow ties, chunky glasses and big earlobe stretched earrings. And then they could work in coffee bars. <laughs> right. Uh, so well done on not knowing your um, hipsters. So uh, let's go to the green team. This is question three. Um, in 1912, who said, I'm a woman who came from the cotton fields of the South. From here, I was promoted to the wash tub. From there, I was promoted to the cook kitchen. From there, I promoted myself into the business of manufacturing hair goods and preparations. I have built my own factory on my own ground. Who said that in 1912? I've got, right, okay. Is, so is I've Chris... got a name in my head and I don't okay, know why Emma. it's there, but I think... I yeah. think it's someone called Madame Walker. Well, the only other answer I could give to that is, is Tresemme a person? Because if not, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I, I think Madame, and... <laughs> Madame Walker sounds fine to... Uh... I, I Madam don't, head from I head don't know why it's there, but it's I've I've read it somewhere, somewhere it, recently. It, I mean, I think it's that. I'm it, Please it don't trust me. We no, no, I think we should trust you. I think we're going, okay. for Matt, we're, we're going for Madam Walker, aren't we? I think you should say and it. You right? are. Okay. You are entirely correct. Wow. It was wow. Madam C. J. Walker, born Sarah Breedlove in 1867. She is often created, credited with being the first self-made female millionaire in American history. Although this is contested by other African American entrepreneur Annie Tumbo Malone. Between 1911 and 1919, Walker's company employed thousands of women in, as sales agents. By 1917, it claimed to have trained more than 20,000 women. Red Team. 
Whose hair is this? It belonged to an 18th and 19th century German writer, scientist and critic, often recognised as the greater German literary figure of modern times. Could it be Goethe? That's what I was thinking. I, I mean, I wouldn't know Goethe, from his yeah. hair. I mean, <laughs> not got particularly kind of, you know, remarkable hair in any. Yeah, you know, we're not getting a huge amount from yeah. hair. <laughs> no, no, how can you not? That. That's the biggest clue. That's his actual hair. That's a bit of the person. Surely you should recognise it immediately. <laughs> it's missing the face. That's the problem. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the only person I can think of that would sort of fit those criteria would be Goethe. It's got but... to be Goethe. Yeah. Yeah. Should we go Goethe? Should we go. Yeah. yeah. Always go, Goethe. You got it correct. It is Goethe's hair. Whose hair is this? There are two locks here from two different people. They both spent a stormy night at a villa on Lake Geneva. One credited a monster, the other an ode to the wind. So that's going oh. to be um, Wollstonecraft, isn't it? Nope, that is um, Sorry, Shelley, 100% Mary. Mary Shelley and Percy Shelley. by Shelley. Yeah. yeah Shelley. Are you just Shelley. doing that by the hair? Is that just the, doing that it's his, the it's his, That's his moustache, and that's her. That's just <laughs> that's that's her bit of her pubic, part of her pubic, pubic region that's been chipped off. Yes, I don't know the, if it's Bish, right. it's Bish. Percy Bish. Percy Bish. 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 Bish Shelley. 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 Swam like a fish. And Mary Shelley. <laughs> and Mary Shelley and Frankenstein and all that. It is indeed the hair of Percy Bishy Shelley and Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein about a hideous creature assembled from bits of dead offal and assembled by a crazed maniac has spawned many tributes like Robocop, Frankenvina and Eamon Holmes. So uh, at the end of Never Mind the Buzz Cuts, the scores are green team have 10.5 points, but the red team still in the lead with 12.5 points. Well done, well done. In our next round, you'll be given a series of clues about historical figures. After each clue, you can confer and guess who I might be talking about. There are 10 points for guessing who it is after the first fact, eight for the second fact, six for the third fact, four for the fourth, two points if I've given you all the clues. It's a round I'm calling. They think it's all Grover Cleveland, though it's probably not Grover Cleveland. So the red team, here is your first clue. In Islamic tradition, my name is Bilquis, but that is not how I'm most widely known. Ooh, Bilquis? Need a new. Bilquis, not, does, it, does that mean anything to you? Nothing. Not in the moment, no. I'm not getting into okay. it. Second fact. Let's go second, second fact. Second fact. According to the medieval Ethiopian work, Kebra Nagast, my kingdom was located in Ethiopia, but others had argued that it was closer to what is now Yemen. Ooh. Oh, do you think it's highly... Okay. Uh, 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 I do. Uh, uh, yeah. Bill, yes, I think it is. Bill Chris and right. Ethiopia. Yeah. It's got to be highly Selassie. And you are entirely incorrect. Oh. So you're wrong about that. But have a third one. The, the points have gone down. I've been painted by Claude Lorraine, Mark Gertler and Duncan Grant, among others. Yeah, that doesn't help. Still that not doesn't help at all. Sama Hayek. <laughs> Is it Sama Hayek? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. it's, it's closer than Selassie, yeah. let's face it. Uh, <laughs> All right, give us the fourth fourth fact. Fourth one. Yeah. I am famous for arriving in Jerusalem with a caravan of riches. Riches? No, with a caravan caravan <laughs> of riches to question the king. Not the Queen of Sheba. Yeah. Woo! The yes! Queen of Sheba. Hey, we got there. Woo! So did we get two points? I think I think I think you get some points for that because you guessed the Queen of Sheba before the clues ran out. So therefore, you get some points. But now it's the green green teams uh, go, and they will absolutely murder you, I'm sure. So the green teams. Who am I? At the age of two, I was engaged to be married. It didn't work out. Have, may as well have a guess. The other team got to guess, so you can Could have be a any guess. Any of those luck, couldn't oh, it? That could be like any like Catherine um, the Great or someone. I mean, the future Catherine the Great. Um... Age of two. two. Engaged to be married. It could be any sort of monarch, I suppose, or kind of monarch in, in training. Because there's a British, I'm trying to think of the British ones that were engaged young. Oh. 
I'm no, moving on. Oh, moving on. No, let's work. Yeah, let's go, Catherine the Great. Just Catherine so. the Great. It's not Catherine the Great. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> when I became queen, I attempted to reverse my father's and brother's religious reforms. I was going to say oh. Elizabeth the First. Yeah, it's going to be Tudors, isn't it? I mean, they, they're all reversing yeah. each other's reforms every five minutes when they get on the throne, aren't they? So, mm. but, so, so Elizabeth the, the first, did she come after Edward the sixth? Yeah, just what was the phrasing of that again? Um, is he? She... When I became queen, I attempted to reverse my father's and brother's religious reforms. Fathers and yeah. brothers. Okay, mm. so um, Elizabeth. Nina's about to burst again. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could be Mary. It's either Mary, Mary. or Elizabeth. Should we go? Mary was before Elizabeth, right? Yeah. So yeah, Mary. Mary was a Catholic and and went back, didn't she? So it'll be Mary. Mary. Final answer. Yeah. You're correct. Yay! It is Mary the first. Of Amazing. course it is. Ooh. So well done, guys. Mary the first is the only English monarch to have a cocktail named okay, after Richard. her, the Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. Other historical figures have had drinks named after them include Rob Roy, Giovanni Bellini, and Brian Gin and Tonic. And question two for the red team. Who am I? I trained as an actor. Give it a guess. No. <laughs> oh. William Shakespeare. Oh, hang on. Trained as an actor. It could be you, on it? Is it Glenda Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, I'll allow you two guesses and I'll tell you, it's not William Shakespeare or Glenda Jackson. Okay, next, 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 clue. next clue. My father was held at the Marshalsea Debtors Prison. Debtors? Yeah, Debtors Prison, my father. Uh, so that's I'm... British. And I have a Dickens. Ooh, Dickens. That's, Dickens. That's a, Dickens. Is it Charles Dickens? I know. Yeah. Oh, did you train? Yeah. Did you train as an actor? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, Dickens. Correct. It is yeah. Charles Dickens. I was waiting for you to just say, just agree. Oh, for God's sake. Well Nisha. done, Nisha. Wins it for you guys. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Okay, now Stonehenge. Charles Dickens, of course, created some of the most memorable characters in English literature, like Ebenezer Scrooge, the Wackford Squeers, Lemanuel Squackerbackle, Wilkins McFwabber, Charity Picksniff, Bain and Badger, Paul Sweedlepipe, Sergeant Buzzfuzz, Bumbleton Fumbleclump, and Chicken Stalker, Sebastian Thunderquim, Afri Flintwitch, and who could forget, Crangles, Bojangles, and his well angled mangles. And I promise I made fewer of those up than you think. Right, Greens, question two. Who am I? I trained as a lawyer in London. Could be Lenin. Uh, yeah. Did he, did he train as a lawyer in London? I was going to go for Gandhi. He trained as a lawyer in London. Oh, could be. Ooh. Gandhi? Is that your final answer? Up to mm. our team. Yeah, yeah. let's go for... Mm, let's... Just, I'll roll with whatever. Let's go for Gandhi. Let's go for Gandhi, because I'm not sure where Lenin... Final answer, it's locked. Okay. You are correct! Yes. Oh my gods! Oh my gods! That is amazing! <laughs> and that is amazing. That's that very amazing. cool. Yeah. That's so good. That's, I'm starting to think that my computer's been hacked. Uh, that's yeah. very good. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi was nominated for the Nobel Prize five times, which sounds impressive until you realise that Donald Trump has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize at least twice, and he dropped the most powerful non-nuclear bomb on the world in Afghanistan. So the bar for peace is not particularly high. Uh, right, uh, red team question three. Um, beat that. More. Let's more. see if you could do this. Let's see if you could do this. Okay, Mahatma who am Gandhi, I? Mahatma Gandhi is to the Nobel Peace Prize as to what Al Murray is to the Perrier Award. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of information. <laughs> okay, uh, Red Team, who am I? Before I changed it to something grander, my original name was Temujin, meaning blacksmith. Something grander. So mm. they've changed it. Are this they... is going to be... A Khan, a kind of a Kublai Khan or, a, or somebody like that. 
can you no. say the name again it was tap temujin Tem it could be temujin yeah. it's temujin oh, oh i think you might have something there nishan yeah what did you well, say nishan? genghis genghis or kublai do we, do we reckon genghis oh, oh, oh kublai. i was gonna go chris eubank sorry <laughs> Chris yeah. Eubank was a famous blacksmith before. <laughs> well, oh, hang on, who, who's That's first? It will be the, it will be the dad. Uh, Chris the Eubank was before everyone. No, mm. <laughs> true. <laughs> before all other people. All other things. Um, it's just going. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. I yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, let's go, Jengus. Yeah. Going, Jengus. Is that your final answer? I You're think... correct as well. Yeah. You're very awesome. Everybody's awesome. Uh, Genghis Khan. Lovemoney.com included Genghis in a list of richest people to ever to have lived, along with Jeff Bezos. When he was asked how he felt to be on a list with a brutal dictator responsible for the death of millions, Genghis Khan was unavailable for comment. Anyway, uh, well done, guys. I'm dead impressed. Um, but yeah, I knew that one, so I'm less impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still impressed, but yeah. Okay, who am I, green team? Who am I? As a teenager, I was captured and held for ransom. Ooh. Um, it's not Genghis Khan again, even though as a child. No, nor is it Gandhi in this case, I think, <laughs> uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, is it going to be in a kind of sort of a monarch or someone like that? Well, Richard I was, was held for ransom. But not as an infant, right? Teenager, teenager. He could have been nineteen. He was youngish, oh. I think. Fair enough. Should I don't have a like better that? answer. Yeah. Oh, what's the better answer? I don't have a better answer. Oh yeah, let's, <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go. With, let's go with that as our happy. first try. Lion, Lionheart, oh. Richard the Lionheart. R Richard the Lionheart is the wrong answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Second clue: I married a tobacco trader who was ten years my senior. I don't know. I don't know at no. all. No. Um, okay. Um, Let's take the next clue then. Did you say Chris Eubank, Gemma? Gemma, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's not Chris Eubank. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> My descendants include Edith Wilson, the wife of Woodrow Wilson, the actor Glenn Strange, and the scientist Percival Lau. Okay, so. Nina seems really into this <laughs> one as well. Yeah. I think I know who it is. I think I know who it is. Lordy. Kidnapped. Uh, I mean, is it. Uh, African American. Oh, is it po Pocahontas? Oh, yeah. Oh, it it's got to be, yeah, Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas. For sure. Let's go, Pocahontas. Definitely. You're oh. correct, it is Pocahontas. Well done. And I love the way that if anybody ever wants to play um, poker, I recommend it doing it uh, with Nina because the, the amount of. Yes, it's it. No, no, no. I mean, no, it's awful. I'm awful. <laughs> We were all nodding to Charles Dickens, to be fair. We all just went... To, <laughs> to be fair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you could even say Pocahontas. Oh, very good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, the scores are... Here it is. The green team have 34.5 points and the red team have 34.5 points. It is so close. I'm going to explode. And that brings us to the final quick fire round, a chance to make up a point at speed. You'll have a minute as a team to answer as many of the following questions as you can. This is a round called Just a Minute is the amount of time this round will last. No, there can't all be winners. That is the name of the round. So we will start with the red team. Now, you've got to do this quickly. So you just shout out the answer when you know it. And um, if you don't know, say pass and I'll move on. Um, but you, the, your first one's a list, so it'll be fine. Are you ready, red team? It's red team first, yeah? Cool. Name all the Stuart monarchs to have ruled in England in order. In order. So you've got to do it in order. So it's going to be, oh my God, starting with James. Then it's Charles the first, then it's Charles the second, then it's ah, William and Mary, then it's Anne, I think. Question two. What number do you get if you add together the year of the Battle of Hastings with the year of the Great Fire of London and divide by two? 1666, isn't it? The 1066. And 1666. Yeah. Divide by two. That's uh, the hard bit. 1366. <laughs> okay. 
Well you. done. Who said this? Uh, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Who said that? Machiavelli. Move on. Let's go with that. Yeah, you're wrong. Uh, to what was uh, a commentator referring in 1899 when they described the woman's emancipator? It imparts an open freedom and freshness to their life, hitherto cribbed, cabined, and confined by convention. You know what, what kind of questions are these? This is ridiculous. I thought this was meant to be a quick fire. Can I? This say is you quick fire. Round? Round? This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's a one-word one answer, on this. It's, it's a one-word answer. answer. You asked the first question. She had to go through all the stupid. I thought these were quick <laughs> answers. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's not bullshit. It's, quick for it's not story, bullshit. Maybe. It's not the right Who's answer. Made these questions? A minute's got to be up by now. He's taking a minute there saying are that. are nerds <laughs> who have been shielding for a year have come up with these questions. You just don't like it, the idea of female emancipation. I ask one question about it and he loses his mind. I thought these are quick questions where we have quick answers. We have answered five, six different... Okay, go on. Is it, is it done? Uh, that's the end of the minutes. Uh, the answer of the woman's emancipator, it imparts an open air freedom and freshness to her life, hitherto cribbed and cabined and confined by convention, is the bicycle. Um, uh, also, um, <laughs> you were correct, the answer of the Battle of Hastings plus the Great Fire of London divided by two is 1366. Power concedes nothing without demand and it never will. The answer was Frederick Douglass. And name all the Stuart monarchs who have ruled England in order. Um, James I and VI of Scotland, Charles the first, Charles the second, James the second, Mary, who well, you missed, Mary, uh, William the third, Mary the second, and Anne the first. So you I did. must have got some. You got, Come you on. got, you did pretty well on that. And under pressure, I was impressed. Thanks, I was impressed. Just Mr. So, James. Exactly. And, uh, and it was, um, the emancipation thing was the bicycle. So there yeah. we go. Uh, you can't let women on that. It's ridiculous. So, <laughs> right. Um, Finally, here we go. Uh, this is, oh, who was that? That was the red team. So it's the green team now. Are you ready, green team? Are you ready to go? Yeah. Your minute starts now. What year was the World Wide Web invented? 19, oh God, um, 89. The terracotta army depicts the army of which Chinese emperor? Qin Shi Huangdi. What number do you get if you add the number of the Grand Old Duke of York's men to the year of the Battle of Waterloo? Oh, uh, 1815 plus Grand Old Duke of Men, 10,000. Um, 1812. Yeah, 10,000 men and it's 18. 10, 11,000. Uh, 11, Boom! 800. Well done. Uh, in what century was the Taj Mahal built? 17th. What religious book was published in Palm, Palmyra, New York in 1830? What religious book was book published book in Palmyra? Book of Mormon. What archaeological discovery was made on the 4th of November 1922? Um, um, Tutankhamun. And Tutankhamun. that is all the emergency questions I have. You are far too quick. So that's the end of your minute. Uh, and you got it all right. So you're nerds. And that is good. Okay, I'm, so I'm, that's. I'm glad, glad that ads were proper quick fires and you're. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we now? Can we now? Thirty seconds protesting. We want to protest. I was ready oh, to do the. Tu I thought we'd get the Tudor kings and queens. Yeah, come no, on. You have to understand, <laughs> Ahmed. You have to understand. Richard's been ill, and he needs yeah, all the help <laughs> he can get. Okay, you've just got to keep it. You know, he'll walk out again. Keep it right. Okay, so that's it. Who won? We've got to find out. I think we know who won. I think it might be the green team. We have the red team have a very impressive, a solid 36 and a half points, but the green team are storming away and they win with 40 and a half points. Yes. So the green team are our victorious, unbeatable Henry V's and the red team slink away, heads hung in shame like Henry VI. Thank you to Nina Ramirez, Omid Jalili, Nisha McSweeney, Emma Butcher, Richard Herring and Rana Mitter. That has been um, His Quiz 2021. We will see you later in the year and always remember um, why there were so many crusades. Because they were so Moorish. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs>